Okay, so hello, hello, hello. It's Catherine Chapman here and welcome to another vlog. I am super excited to have the very, very fabulous Helen Lau with us here. Uh, she acts to practitioner extraordinaire. Um, <laughs> Good so, morning. Uh, come and join us. Welcome to the vlog. Um, so Helen, like me, has a past in the NHS. She, um, I, I went to say was, you are an occupational therapist. I think, I think, do you not think you always will be in, in some, some way, shape or form? Yeah, occupational therapy is a bit of a vocation rather than a profession. So I think it's, uh, I still think like an OT, um, although I haven't practiced for a long time now. Yeah. So I don't think I could call myself an OT, but yeah, it's still, you can take the girl out of OT. But. Yep. No, I <laughs> no, absolutely. But um, you got found by Shiatsu, and I won't say too much more about that because you're going to let us know how that mm. that worked later. You, um, she's a sea lover, uh, about to swap the Kent coast for the Devon coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you've got hubby and a daughter, um, and um, what else can I say? And you're and you're wonderful, and uh, and. Oh enthusiastic about everything um <laughs> like like me maybe not maybe not quite, quite slightly like, less bouncy than you yeah. but then I think most people are <laughs> um so like I said um I've heard this story before but I love it can you tell us a little bit more about uh shiatsu and how it found you yeah sure so Shiatsu is kind of one of those therapies that people have just never heard of. And then if you have heard of it, you're just a convert. <laughs> That's like a really tall claim. But, you know, I love introducing people to Shiatsu because when they learn about it and experience it, you know, they're like, oh, wow, this is some good stuff. So uh, it originated in Japan. So it is a hands on therapy. Uh, you keep your clothes on, <laughs> which is unusual for a body treatment because a lot of people, it's all massage and, you know, you take your clothes off. So that's the first thing I kind of say to people, you know, is, is it's, in fact, if anything, I tell people to put extra layers on. I bundle people in a blanket because when you get relaxed, which you will during a shiatsu session, your body cools down. And so actually I like to keep you really kind of warm and cozy. So if anything, I, I just say put extra layers on. So it is and comes from an Eastern uh, medicine point of view rather than the Western medicine. So you're talking about occupational therapy. Um, we'll go into that a little bit in a minute. But um, yeah, it comes from a very different viewpoint. It has a background of traditional Chinese medicine, but it takes that from a very Japanese viewpoint. Um, what that means is that a lot of things that you might kind of experience as symptoms, you might say to your GP or, you know, a health practitioner, oh, and there's this going on, and there's this going on, you know, and they'll just go, oh, that doesn't go under that heading. So I'm going to treat one thing. Um, and, and all these other bits just kind of get lost. Um, Western medicine, the way that shiatsu would talk about it is that it's trimming the grass, it's just cutting the grass, whereas looking at shiatsu and traditional Chinese medicine, it goes into the root and says, why are you getting those symptoms? Let's treat that root problem. Um, so it's slightly different viewpoint. And a lot of people will say to me, oh, I've got this really random thing going on. I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that totally fits the diagnosis. <laughs> and I love that because the thing with shiatsu is that it takes a person as a whole. You can't separate out physical and emotional health. It, it, you just can't. You know, can you say that this part of your body is physical and this part is emotional? You just can't do that. So. Yeah. It's an entire whole thing. And it's such a Western ignorance to try and separate those out. And I actually think it's to do with how they can provide services, not about what a person needs. So I'm not going to get on that soapbox today because I can really rant about that. But I just love it, you know, uh, working with the person as a whole. And what we're going to do is with shiatsu is we are looking at natural energy that is running in the body. It runs around the body 
in pathways called meridians i've got a really complicated super lovely chart here can you see that there we go you might recognize that from the acupuncture and those kind of uh, traditional chinese medicine things and they just run around the body each pathway or meridian has a different function um, and it's named after an organ so you'll have stomach and spleen and lung and large intestine and liver and gallbladder and they have all these um different terms it doesn't necessarily mean specifically your heart but it might be to do with what we may think of more as emotionally to do with our heart each meridian works on many different levels it works on a physical level an emotional level an energetic level and a spiritual or sort of uh, ancestral level so um when i'm treating a meridian i can feel which area I'm working on in energetically and also then I can tell whether that is a physical issue or an emotional issue and and focus the treatment accordingly so um yeah it's just fascinating so someone will come in they would usually lie on a mat on a futon on the floor as I say I bundle them up nice and kind of warm get them wearing some nice cozy socks it's very huga <laughs> as yeah, the dining table would say I love that concept um yeah, and then I may start a diagnosis area in the sort of tummy area. That's a really key energetic center, um, which is really good for diagnosis. Um, and that would be just some kind of gentle pressure and prodding to kind of have a feel uh, for me to diagnose uh, what I need to work on. And from there, I would look at the two areas, the two meridians that are most out of balance. So the analogy that I like to explain it with is if you imagine a stream of water and you have a great big boulder in the middle of it. And then so at one side, you've got all the water kind of building up and all the pressure and there's a push and a, a, you know, an energy there. And the other side of the boulder is very depleted. It's flat. It may be a bit more still. And what we do with the shiatsu is we look at the two that are most out of balance and we take that boulder out and we let it flow along. <laughs> so we do that by using uh, pressure. So we're going to be using um, acupressure, whether it's usually hands, sometimes thumbs, a bit hard to show you that. There we go, like thumbs <laughs> along as we go along, sometimes some kind of rotations and some stretches, and that just kind of keeps the energy flowing. And, uh, yeah, it's a really... On a basic level, it's just really relaxing. Uh, yeah. It goes way deeper than that. It rebalances, it restores, it revitalizes. Oh, just lovely. It's lovely, <laughs> isn't it? Because I mean, even if yeah. even if the kind of the whole the whole concept is lost on you, the fact yeah. that you are laying there and having that treatment doesn't mean that you get any any less of that goodness, no. whether you buy into it or not. It's brilliant. Absolutely. Um, you know, actually, my husband, he's very German scientist, you know, and he'll say if I ever do a treatment on him, he'll go, what are you doing now? And I'm like, well, I'm following such and such a bone and I'm, you know, working around this muscle. What I'm actually doing now is and, you know, and I'm with him. He's with me to that point. And then I'll start talking energetically. And he's like, yeah. No. <laughs> But it still works. You, know, you don't have yeah. to be understanding it for it to be working on you. Some clients fall asleep in the middle of a session and they just gently come to at the end. Some people are with me the whole way through. Uh, some people are kind of, they get colours or they go off somewhere or they have different things come up. And it's just, you don't have to talk in a session. You can come in, hi, lie down, fight. That's it. A lot of people do have some things that come up for them. Some people totally zone out. Some people are totally present. It's very individual. Oh, I love that. I, that's. I mean, and that's the major thing, isn't it? That it, it's it's yeah. for you and it works for you. It's just amazing. I just love it. Somebody, I do a treatment. I see them coming in. They go, blah, 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 you know, with all of their things they want to work on, and they sit up at the end. And you know, like if you've done relaxation, you're a bit kind of like. Oh, you know, and their face is brighter and their eyes are sparkling and they're more present and you can just see they're calmer. And it's just, I love doing that for people. It's just a great job. <laughs> and how did it find you? Well, I was working as an occupational therapist, as you said. Uh, I've done OT 19, 20 years, something along those lines. Um, very Western medicine. I worked in um, lots of different specialties, but my main specialty was uh, brain injury rehab, so stroke and brain injury. Um, 
And I just got really frustrated. I loved the job, but there was so much I could achieve with the patient. And then I was restricted from service level of being able to offer that. And the Western concept, as I said, of just how it looks at things is very linear. I value Western medicine. Uh, to me, the bonus is having both um, and knowing when to tap into each. Um, but I just got really frustrated. And um, I also then kind of thought, oh, I'd like to have my own family at some point. This is all pre my daughter. Um, and I just kind of started looking around. I'd done quite a bit of spiritual development myself, um, just finding what was interesting, finding out what was innately within me, tuning into me and learning a little bit about that. And then I had some tickets to go to a natural health fair and it, it represented everything. I mean, it had religions there. It had um, people who were doing music therapy and gong therapy and, you know, red tent circles and they had osteopathy and uh, literally anything that you could think of that's outside of the kind of Western medicine model is represented and I'd been a bit poorly and I was like oh how shall I go I was not really feeling it and a friend of mine said no come on you're coming you, you've got to get out of the house come on and said to me what what are you here for just looked me straight in the face and what are you here for and I just kind of looked and went that <laughs> and that was the Devon School of Shiatsu I had no idea what it was and just something just said just go look at that and about ooh, three years later, I was on the stand doing <laughs> taste of treatments as a student. So it was, it was a bit bonkers. But um, oh, that's amazing. It, that made me just do it hooked me. I had a treatment and I just was like, wow, it just sent me off on a rocket. So it was, it was super. Yeah. Oh, isn't it amazing? It's those, those little breadcrumbs, your intuition leaves them. You just got to follow them. Yeah. Follow those gut and you know, instincts and the, the breadcrumbs absolutely <laughs> yeah, incredible um and as you continue training we are both about to embark on some amazing training um into the subconscious mind exciting um how do you see that fitting in with your shiatsu practice well, it's been interesting because the training that we're doing with the subconscious transformation is very much geared around coaching and coaching is not something I've ever gone into <laughs> that world of coaching. It's like, oh, I don't know. I don't see that. But I would say about 90 percent of sessions that I do, if probably not all of them, um, when someone comes in with a particular issue that they want to work on, the, the root is emotional and what we're actually doing is releasing held emotions now I've had throughout my life really profound grief um, on multiple occasions and this was something that I joined this training to work on in myself I'd had counseling and such and it just hadn't kind of even hit the sides and I found it so transformative <laughs> I know that's the word but it is yeah. and it just helped me so much and I was halfway through doing this these sessions for myself and it just I just had this like cosmic download I was I hate to give you this in, you know image but I was in the shower <laughs> I was washing my hair and I just yeah, had well, like the I best kind of, ideas come <laughs> sorry about that folks you know um and I was just literally just like thinking somebody had been talking about oh you know I'm going to be in a, you know, a life coach and I was like oh life coach yeah it's not really me and someone else had put a post on social media about oh, I feel so emotional this morning and I was like oh that's good she's processing that she's letting go of it and I was like I love this work I love the psychology I mean I used to work in brain injury it's all about you know cognition perception psychology and I was just suddenly literally went I want to do this I want to be able to do what I'm getting for my clients and so what I want to do is the ability with shiatsu to find and release those held emotions now we all often think of an emotion as a bad emotion feeling sad feeling grief feeling anger feeling resentment or anxiety these are all red flag they're they're our protection system then they're, they're not bad emotions they're there for a purpose and the only time when an emotion becomes negative is when we hold on to it and we store it and we don't allow it to process. That's when it becomes destructive and harmful to us. 
So I could really see how my shiatsu really helps people release it in an energetic form where it's held and supported and guided. And at the same time, we were I was experiencing and we will be learning um, tools to help people and facilitate to do that. And I suddenly kind of realized those two together. I mean, that's dynamite, isn't it? So, yeah. yeah and I it was amazing. I had this cosmic kind of literal I had a business plan I had my logo I had emotion in motion and I even saw how the logo looked and it it just was like kapow there it is Ooh, okay <laughs> let's right. run with that and I did and and straight off the back of that I did my uh, website which I have avoided for about a year and a half <laughs> yeah it just totally flowed so it was amazing lovely. Isn't it? It must yeah, have shifted a big boulder for you eh? oh man there were mountains moving <laughs> It was, I mean, yeah, landslide. I love, I love that I've had this conversation, I had this conversation with a mutual friend of ours, Julie, about, about integrating this work into, into my work as well. And yeah. like you've just said, it comes up every time. We actually do this work anyway. It's really yeah. nice to have some actual tangible tools, but we do this work, we talk about this work all of the time yeah. in, our, in our kind of everyday yeah. It's, it's what we're doing and if each of us can take these tools and tweak it a little bit because no one you know population we are all so individual and I believe that we are all tools in the same toolbox and all we are doing is find, helping clients to find which tool suits them it's how to facilitate so you know I'd be the first person if someone comes and goes actually do you know what shiatsu is not for me I'll go okay you might get on better with doing this you know we all work collaboratively we all work together in a way that helps that person to do it in their way because you know yeah. we're not prescriptive that's how it works isn't it you know oh it's incredible absolutely incredible yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. and now for you um with regards to things like self-care do you have something that is non-negotiable either either on a daily or a a weekly basis um, that you do for yourself and why this is kind of one of the things that also happened for me I was very much a uh, I'll put everyone else before me first and I've kind of learned the importance of self-care and prioritizing myself it's not a oh well everyone else can go jump but it's about I'm then in such a good place that what everyone else is getting is what they were getting before and some and yeah. it's just been really quite just watching that being reflected back has been phenomenal one of the things I'm really good at I've always got a big pint glass of water around I'm so rubbish at drinking water so I have that with me and I just fill that up the whole time and uh, yeah so make sure I get my water in. I don't really have like a daily thing and that's because I think each of my days are quite different so I kind of have my bracket of a week and I make sure that I have certain things that I do within that. The only thing I think I would do daily is there is a free app called Insight Timer. And we were recommended to listen to something called I Am Affirmations. Now, the guy who does the speaking on it has this fabulous voice and it's such positive affirmations each day. Um, it's just thinking about myself as I am a positive thinker. I am here to spread joy. I am a joyful being and I want to shine that out into the world. You know, I'm here to kind of help heal the world. And one that I just love, you know, it says where focus goes, energy flows. And it's true, good if you're not know. focused, <laughs> yeah, good to know, that's it. And I love it because it's, it's so kind of catchy, but it also it's so what hits the nail on the head so I listen to that every day it's just 15 minutes I usually do that I'll have a shower and then I kind of just it's all about showers it? sorry um and then I literally put that on while I'm kind of getting dressed and it's I don't have to just sit and just listen to it I just allow it to be on almost in the background and sometimes I do sit and listen yeah you know but I don't I don't give myself a hard time about it, it has to be each day um I fit it in when it suits because each day is different sometimes I'm doing school runs sometimes I'm not you know. yeah. I do make sure I have a walk every day um in the fresh air now most days that is just school school run which is half an hour but when I'm walking I make sure that I take a nice big deep breath of fresh air um notice some flowers on the way um you know some beautiful skies or a beautiful view being quite mindful I guess about it but not 
consciously so. Um, but yeah, every week I make sure I do either yoga or Pilates, depending on what zone I'm in at the time. Um, will depend on which one I'm tapping into. Um, and yeah, I make sure that I have a kind of quiet time. That is actually something I do every day. Uh, so if hubby's doing the school run in the morning, I just half an hour of the house quiet. And I sit and have a cuppa. Yeah. I love coffee. That's one of my favourite times. <laughs> oh, it's just, you know, I love my family, but I love the quiet. <laughs> and I need that. I need a bit of, you know, quiet alone time. Um, that just, I just sit kind of in gratitude, really, and just think of positive things and and that makes a really big difference but I do make sure I have fun you gotta have fun in your week oh so, absolutely yeah I'm part that's of the fun. choir you're part of the I, choir yes absolutely we've got that later on oh that's um, one of my highlights of my of my week definitely have been known to turn up in fancy dress at various times I don't know, know what you're fun. talking about <laughs> you gotta have fun yeah. Oh, girls just want to have fun exactly do you know what I love about all of those things is that there's no no shoulding I should do this oh, I should no. do that it fits in um I completely echo what you said with since when I did the um ship sessions the first time for about a year I had been like trying to force myself into some sort of morning habit um and wanting to do some sort of meditation every morning and things like that and I just never I'd never managed to do it it used to it used to irritate the life out of me I did the shift sessions never with the intention of trying to form some sort of routine or like morning ritual um and with complete ease I listened to my hypnosis every single morning apart from this morning I don't know what happened this morning um and and then on the school run, I stick Kenneth in my ears um, <laughs> and and I listen to him, him and he just he just plays on the way back as I'm yeah. as I'm driving. And then I usually have about five minutes um, with him still talking and I just sit in the car all nice and warm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's but and again, if it, if that doesn't happen, if I've got to like go off somewhere else after the school run, I don't then beat myself up yeah I haven't done it it's what fits and works for you and that's what yeah. came really shone through for that with, with everything that you've got it's lovely so one of the things just to reflect back though is like you know you said oh one of your aims was you wanted to meditate daily and and the whole purpose of meditation is to kind of stay calm and then it's like actually what you were getting is pressure on yourself and irritation and you know probably a bit of uh, resistance and a bit of um resentment like oh, I, don't, I don't well I've got time to do that you know why do you do that? It, <laughs> but actually, if you kind of go, do you know what? I'll get it in somewhere today. It happens. It happens with ease, and it happens in a way that you're like, oh, that's nice. Rather than, oh God, I've got to do this. Yeah. I don't believe in shoulds. I don't think shoulds are in anyone's vocabulary. I think there's a I could, and I will, and yeah, I'll make that happen. So, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. It it should be removed from the dictionary. <laughs> Someone had to say it. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, now, so regular watchers of my vlog know that when I bring a fabulous expert on with me, um, what I tend to do is try and extract um, a little bit of their expertise and put it into uh, my vitality rooms and this is no exception we had enormous fun recording um, a about a 30 minute session of dough in stretches um, and I have to tell you I did I did message you afterwards the um, I did a class then later on that um that day and we'd had a full-on weekend usual things I'd had a I'd done a big class in the morning and then I'd had clients and then we recorded that so it's always Monday's always a full-on day um so I came to do the hit class so it's an energetic class again with mm. absolute ease honestly with absolute ease there was no I 
that's it with absolute ease it's my <laughs> is was my overall feeling I was powering through that class yeah I mean my class must have thought what uh, I mean I'm you know I'm full on anyway what is she on today yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like a it wasn't like a forced kind of thing no. it, a kind of a kind of um low likened it like to the the energy and kind of stuff that maybe you get from a caffeine or a buzz but without the the jarry kind of like horrible underlying feeling of it it was just easy but lots of energy flowing and it was yeah, so it was, like an, a natural boost rather than an artificial one yeah yeah and it was yeah yeah so it's my goodness so it's uh yeah it worked yeah. <laughs> it worked so that is in um vitality rooms which is very very exciting what else have I got to say I'm looking over you have to excuse me and I'm looking over so um, for those those who haven't seen it yet the dough in uh that literally translated just means that you stretch your body and your limbs in order to get the energy flowing through those meridians more smoothly um, and it's just a, a series of stretches that you do in the direction of the meridians and yeah it's Again, it's something that is recommended to do daily. I'm a bit more realistic that I get to do that. I don't. Hands up. But whenever I'm treating um, to do a shiatsu is part of my preparation because it totally gets me in the zone. And as you say, instead of just like having to force the energy to happen, it's there and it's it's already in flow. So it does make a huge difference. Yeah. Perfect. And it was a very exciting one for me because this is the first um the first new thing that I'm putting into Vitality Rooms since it's gone live. So uh, ah, yay. So that was that was very exciting watching it keep growing and especially so this goes this is gonna go into the study. So for anyone that knows, there's a kitchen, there's a fitness suite, and there's a study. And like we were saying earlier on all the things which is where the mind hub is so that all of the things to do with the mind and subconscious and things like that is where it's at as much as i would and it's this is on the description as much as i would love to tell you that it's all in the fitness suite it absolutely isn't and i mean the kitchen's very very important as well but actually the mind hub the study is where it all is at definitely <laughs> um is there anything that um that people could do at home um, with regards to shiatsu on themselves? Sure, so I mean, doing is, is the first one to recommend because it's a self shiatsu. It, it's a whole body, get it all flowing and connected. Um, but I thought I'd show you a few first aid points. Mm. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, right. So um, if you've got long neck, I, one of the things <laughs> that I have to have really short that. nails, otherwise we're acupuncturing. <laughs> So um, if you do have really long nails, you might want to use like a kind of knuckle just so you're not, you know. Um, now, what we're going to do is we're not, I want you to just do something. First of all, I want you to just imagine that you're pressing a doorbell. Go on. <laughs> okay. Make a noise as well. Bing bong. <laughs> now this time, that's kind of slightly the wrong quality that we want. This time, I want you to just think about if you were pushing against a really heavy door, all right? And how that kind of feels. What you do is you bring your whole body into it. Mm -hmm. And it comes from this kind of har, this middle section here, all right? You don't just push like that. If it's really heavy, you lean your whole body in. That is the technique of shiatsu. So what we're going to do, it's a bit kind of hard to do on yourself if you're doing that, but I'm going to show you a few points that can be really helpful for people. So I thought, oh, what are the kind of common things? So we're in autumn. It's the time of the lung and the large intestine where that's a really autumnal energy. And there's a lot of snotty colds going on. So I'm going to show you a few points that you can do. Now, the best way to do it is do it at a desk. So I'm just going to pop my elbows on the desk. Lovely. And you're just going to pop your thumbs. Now, when you smile... You have this, Catherine's got it beautifully there. I'm going you to have this lovely kind of like V shape there. You're going to go just to the bottom of that. And you'll find you're on a, like the, just underneath a little bony ridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're not pushing with your thumbs because that would be doorbell. Let your elbows rest on the table and you're just going to find those points and you're just going to rest the weight of your head in. Can you feel that? I think this is going to be my screenshot for, to advertise this. <laughs> Please don't. 
Oh, lovely. And you just sit there. If that feels quite breezy, you can just kind of breathe. And cut, yeah. and should it feel a little bit bruisy? It, it might do. If it's a bit depleted, then it might feel a bit bruisy. Some points tend to be a bit more bruisy than others. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the other ones would be just here on either side. Now, you might want to do that with fingers rather than thumbs because you're mm -hmm. kind of, yeah, thumbs are a bit big. So just either side. Now, you can do it on one side. You can do it on both. It does reflect um, and affect both. You can feel like a little dimple there. That's really good for clearing all the kind of nasal well, can, Yeah, you can feel it. I mean, with regards to um, like muscles and vessels and stuff, this is like, I mean, this is like the Clapham Junction of the face here. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is what's fascinating. So to me, Western medicine is catching up because what you find is as you learn more about anatomy and physiology, and we'll have both done that because we've done a lot of NHS work, the more Western A&P that you learn, the more you realise how the traditional Chinese medicine, the points, the energetic system, yeah. it's already been labelled millennia ago, yeah. you know, and it's like, come on, catch up. So there yeah. we go. So we've got that one, that one, and then just on your eyebrows here, okay, you will need thumbs on this one. Now, this is, I would say, do two together. Maybe this is the one you want to do on your screenshot. They'll be like, <laughs> they look really confused. And yeah. let you really let the weight of your head. Now, you'll probably feel where there's the kind of a junction. That does feel breezy. Yeah. This is also quite, yeah. So just breathe on it. And what you'll find is if it does feel quite bruisy, that actually if you just stay there, it will kind of ease up. Release up, yeah. I think yeah. you've you've shown me this one before and I've actually, yeah, really I, end, I do okay. end up pushing through this point relatively regularly. It's yeah. kind of, it feels, yeah. Although it, it does feel bruisy, it feels nice. Yeah, it's kind of a, oh. um, so that's, they're really good for kind of clearing out those nasal passages. It's also kind of quite a good one. If you've got a bit of a headache, it kind of ten, removes a bit of tension with that one. It, headaches are tricky field because they have a lot of different causes. If you have tinnitus a lot, just here, you can pop your thumb in and there's just before the little bump there, mm. I don't actually know the name for that. There's like a little dimple mm -hmm. and again, lean your head into it that's a great one if you suffer from tinnitus if it's even if it's just low level and it just kind of woo, comes in and goes out if you feel that starting you can just sit and do that and it will just it's funny is it you can actually feel out. those those little points you just move around a little bit and you kind of your, your thumb just sort of fits fits in doesn't it you're like oh there's that's where it was meant to go it's like it's designed <laughs> Who knew that you're Who knew? And the last one, I know things have been difficult this year psychologically for a lot of people. I know it's, you know, uh, people who may have had a little kind of quiet rumbling of anxiety or low mood, that that is something that has been quite heightened this year. Um, so I wanted to show um, two points. You could use whichever one you want. You could use both, whichever. These are both really discreet. You can just sit and do this quietly by yourself. Or if you're in a situation where it is quite anxiety provoking, whatever that environment is for you, you can do this really discreetly. I mean, you don't like doing that. But it's um, you and it's these two are just amazing points. So on your hand, if you feel follow your little finger down, mm -hmm. there's like a little bone just there. Mm hmm. And just underneath, so you want to just put your thumb into that point. This is yeah. called the mind palace. It's super. It's actually a first aid point that is recommended if someone is in shock, if someone has really low blood pressure. Um, you're okay to use this if you do have high blood pressure. That's okay. Um, I would maybe, if it's super high blood pressure and not very well controlled, we'll go on the other one. But um, it's really good to just calm the mind and to just raise the spirits a little. So that's a really nice one. You can literally just sit there. No one's going to know what you're doing. You just look like you're holding your wrist. It's just, and it's a lovely one. And just breathe. And it's such a lovely point that accesses a really core nurturing energy that can be so supportive and boosting 
The other one, and I use this one a lot if I'm feeling quite nervous, um, is another one of the heart energies and um, heart protector. And if you kind of make a fist where your middle finger sits, yeah, that's where you're going to go. Now, so I, <laughs> Catherine and I both go in a choir and I have on occasion been, had done a solo and I was shaking my knees were shaking and so what people don't realize is that I was stood by the microphone and I was pressing this point and people probably just thought all they see is you just you know like that that looks just quite kind of calm and I was pressing that point like anything and it does really help and you can just sit you can hold that point sometimes in sessions I connect between two points I'm joining the dots really and I will connect with this point and I can sit there for 10 minutes with somebody and the nurture and the self protect, it's called heart protector. You can work out what that does. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a really, really super point. If you feel low, if you feel anxious, it's absolutely great. And you can just sit and just hold that for as long as it feels is right. So. It's amazing, isn't it? Um, you you said that about your solo. When um, I had I know, my so first fun. solo, I just I find it amazing that we, because we've got these tools um, and we can use them ourselves. We don't need anybody else's input. I did actually use somebody else's input. Um, um, I went and got uh, Gina to um, to do a little bit of hypnosis on me just before we went and I went and did my solo because I was kind of like. <laughs> um <laughs> why did I say I do this why did I say <laughs> it don't seem like a really good idea at the time but doesn't it turn it from something so oh my goodness me into actually that was fun and afterwards yeah. it was like I did that and it was yeah really I could have done it again yeah. and again yeah yeah, yeah. but I love yeah. that we've got all of these tools that we can yeah. that we can use and it's not we don't need to reach out for for medication um i mean like like you said the uh, like western medicine is it's just like a plaster over the top of it rather mm -hmm. than rather than going to the root of it and when we've got these tools that we can either use when there is something pressing going on or we can just use in general just to keep just to maintain us um yeah. it's just fantastic oh yeah it's so it's amazing it's amazing i'm so blessed it. to be surrounded by these amazing people I've not had to struggle to find people to come and come and talk about this on the vlog because I've just surrounded by them I'm so so lucky that's incredible yeah. thank <laughs> you so so much for thank you to talk to me and everybody everybody I hope that you enjoyed that I I am absolutely sure there are loads and loads of takeaways for you there as always um you can contact me with any questions and of course um helen how can we find you so yeah um i would say everyone wherever you're living and watching this there will be a shiatsu practitioner near you um treat yourself and book yourself in for a taster session every practitioner will offer a taster session just a one hour treatment if you hate it that's fine you just don't go again but imagine if it's something that you're like, wow, this really helps me. OK, so that's one of the things I would say. Any sh shiatsu practitioner would just be happy to just do a no obligation, you know, taste the session. For me, I have a website. Put your teeth in. SeasideShiatsu.co.uk. Um, the C is so important to me, vitamin C and all that. And yeah, I just kind of captured who I am so yeah just you can message me on that I'd be very happy to answer any questions there's quite a bit on there about the kind of history and theory behind what I've been chatting about and a little bit more about me if you want to find that out so yeah that's fantastic thank you thank you so thank much you. so wherever anybody is watching this I hope you are safe and well and we'll see you on another episode bye